Hello once again, I'm Don Jackson with the international heartbeat of the internet. I'll bet you never thought that it might beat differently depending where you happen to travel in the world. Our world has become a much smaller place thanks to the internet, Skype, email, satellite TV, and sat phone. The ability to roam with your cell phone while away, to be able to send text messages and photos back to your loved ones while on vacation, in another country, or on business. Even though the world has been shrunk due to our technology, there is something still to be said for actually being there. To smell the aromas and fragrances, taste the food, meet the people face to face, see the sights in real time and touch history by running your fingers along stone and marble that have been there for millennia. Ray Bradbury in California wrote, Half the fun of travel is the aesthetic of lostness. Not being able to put Piccadilly together with Regent Street to distant Charing Cross, that is deliciousness. To go down the Spanish steps in Rome and vanish. To go out in Paris midnight crowds and wonder why you love it so as texture after texture drifts by and you wish you could walk forever. I have your travel visa to some of these exotic locales featuring some of the music that just might raise your own heartbeat. So, what exactly is a tourist? Anita Diama has a pretty good description. She featured it in the Boston Globe magazine and described a tourist this way. A tourist is a person who is unashamed of being curious about the place he is in. Tourists are grateful for the kindness of waiters and other strangers. And tourists try to do as much and to have as good a time as possible because they know they're not going to be around long enough to take it all in. She goes on to write, I recently saw a bumper sticker on a truck that said, I'm just a tourist on this planet. And I thought to myself, gee, will you look at that? End quote. And I guess in that sense, we are all tourists here. James Mitchner wrote, If you reject the food, Ignore the customs, fear the religion, and avoid the people. You might better stay home. You are like a pebble thrown into water. You become wet on the surface, but are never part of the water. Are you the adventurous type? Are you willing to sample the tastes that are unique to the country you're visiting? Or are you the type to crave the familiar no matter where you are? A McDonald's is probably only a block or so away from wherever you happen to be standing. Elizabeth Rosen from the book The Primal Cheeseburger wrote, and I quote, The cheeseburger, with its accompanying fries and soft drink, is an accurate reflection of the land and culture from which it arose. Here is a meal that developed out of the immigrant hodgepodge of North America and yet contains not a single food native to the continent. It has beef and cheese from Europe, leavened bread from the Middle East, ketchup from Southeast Asia, tomatoes from South America, cola nuts from Africa, potatoes from Peru, and onions and pickles from just about everywhere. The tastes and traditions of all the world's people come together to form an entirely new way to eat.
I have read this fable by many authors in many different books. The reason, I think, is the underlying message. This version was featured in Not There, Doctor, by Dr. Robert Clifford, and I quote, There is the fable of the old man sitting outside a town, being approached by a stranger. What are they like in this town? asked the stranger. What were they like in your last town? replied the old man. They were delightful people. I was very happy there. They were kind, generous, and would always help you in trouble. You will find them very much like that in this town. The old man was approached by another stranger. What are the people like in this town? asked the second stranger. What were they like in your last town? replied the old man. It was an awful place. They were mean, unkind. Nobody would ever help anybody. I am afraid you will find it very much the same here, said the old man. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, Though we travel the world over to find the beautiful, we must carry it with us, or we find it not. Susan Barron in the New York Times said, Travel is like any extreme experience, dislodged from the familiar, deprived of our customary supports. We are never more ourselves. In the course of a journey, the curious traveler is likely to become adventurous, the nervous agitated. As the commonplace recedes, we are forced to rely on the one thing that never seems to change, our character. The longer we travel, the more we appreciate home. But we take a little bit of home with us no matter where we go. Frank Tippett in Time Magazine wrote, Home can be many things. A house, a town, a neighborhood, a state, a country, a room. Home can be wherever one feels at home, and even a scrap of a place can mobilize that homey feeling. Home can also be divided, which is probably essential for a species whose fundamental dilemma can be described as simultaneous needs for mobility and a sense of home. For nomadic herdsmen, an endless path becomes home. It is not quite true that you can't go home again. The deeper truth is that you never leave the part of home that becomes the movable feast of the imaginations. Sidney J. Harris from Field Newspaper Syndicate wrote, First impressions of people we meet are to be distrusted if they remind us too much of someone we already know or have known. For we tend illegitimately to transfer some of our feelings from the familiar to the new without taking into sufficient account the differences as well as the similarities. End quote. Max Eastman with a pretty good description of the difference in human nature from enjoyment of poetry, wrote, Gather a throng of people and pour them into a ferry boat. By the time the boat has swung into the river, you will find that a certain proportion have taken the trouble to climb upstairs so as to be out on the deck and see what is to be seen. The rest have settled indoors to think what they will be doing upon reaching the other side or perhaps lose themselves in apathy and tobacco smoke. By leaving out this apathetic or addicted to a single enjoyment, we may divide the passengers into two classes, those who are interested in crossing the river and those who are merely interested in getting across.
Finally, it was St. Augustine who said, Men go abroad to wonder at the heights of mountains, at the huge waves of the sea, at the long courses of the rivers, at the vast compass of the ocean, at the circular motion of the stars, and they pass by themselves without wondering. Good night, sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson.